One more time. You are listening to the worst marathon ever. Hi, everybody. Welcome again to That Gets My Goat's Second Worst Marathon Ever. I'm Big Anklevin. And I'm Rich Outfield, and we are on the road driving back from the cabin. We're in the mountains. Still no cell service, so don't try. <laughs> and uh, the microphone seems to want to fall down. It is still raining, or raining again, I guess might be the better way to put it. So if you hear the wipers, sorry. If you hear the thumping on the windshield, sorry. But I, I see sunlight up ahead, so it may be uh, we're out of the worst of it. So we, what we were doing before was the rules of Pixar storytelling. Let's move on to the next one. Which one are we on? 13? Lucky 13. Lucky 13. Okay, let me see if I can pull it up here. And lucky 13. Rule number 13 says, give your characters opinions. Passive slash malleable might seem likable as you write, but it's poison to the audience. Huh. I guess what they're saying here is we want our characters to be interesting. To make your characters more interesting, give them opinions on things. It might seem likable if they just go along with whatever, but... It's also kind of boring. What examples of uh, opinion of uh, opinionated characters from Pixar can you think of? Well, there's Mr. Incredible, and, and he he just he feels like he's been given these powers, and he he needs to use them. He has to use them for good. Uh, he doesn't understand. The, the law that says, you know, you got to keep them a secret and just be a normal person. And, and he, I mean, even his wife doesn't feel that way. And uh, his son shares that attitude of, you know, remember his opinion about the graduation from third grade into fourth grade or whatever it is. How they continue to celebrate mediocrity. Yeah, that is an opinion. And it may fly in the face of a lot of attitudes out there that just, oh, they love to give a trophy to anybody who showed up. And uh, the, the attitude that they say to Dash, right, is everyone is special, Dash. And he's like, yeah, that's the same as saying nobody is. Yeah, which they repeat more than once. Oh, do they? Yeah, that's what uh, Syndrome says he's going to do, is give his powers to everyone. And when everyone is special, no one. <laughs> Syndrome is such a fucking asshole. I, what a loathsome character. But I mean, he dies hard, so I guess it's uh, true. It's shared by the filmmakers. He is supposed to be that way, I, I would assume. But they could have made him. And all. No, he's not a bad guy, or he shouldn't have been. He was a. He wanted to be the sidekick, and he had his heart broken. He should be super sympathetic. But instead, oh, he's just. Ugh, ugh, he's. I hate him. I mean, just like, even the design of the characters is repugnant. <laughs> Although, I guess that could be said for most of the characters in that movie. Yeah, you're not affiliated with me. I don't know that I can think... I mean, that is a good example. I'm trying to think... Of the, the problem with Pixar movies is they're generally set in some kind of a different circumstance. And aside from you know, the main conflict kind of beliefs. Like, Jesse wants to not have to go back in the box. She wants to be able to play with kids again. Uh, other kind of opinions and beliefs, like, you know, uh, Mr. Incredible thinking that the graduation from the first third grade to the fourth grade is ridiculous. Um, there's not a lot of room for that kind of stuff. What political issues or whatever are toys going to have opinions about. Well, but Woody is 100% almost blindly loyal to Andy. Andy this and Andy that. And Andy's my owner. I've got to get back to Andy. And so when he meets Jesse, he's like, Andy, Andy, Andy. If Andy was so great, then he wouldn't have thrown you away. Which I think is pretty close to how, what she says, right? Something like that, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I, 
I, maybe not just opinions, but strong feelings on a certain subject makes a character interesting. Yeah, everybody with the toys does have a kind of a different opinion. You know, it's the toys are there. In Woody's opinion, they just need to be there for the child when he needs them. Um, and then there's like Lotso Hugs Bear, who's just like, people are the worst thing ever. They will throw you away. And there's uh, uh, Stinky Pete's opinion, the children ruin toys. You're going to be destroyed. Stay away from children, they're dangerous. I guess those are a lot of different opinions on the same subject through the same series. But they're also kind of the focus of the uh, conflict as well. So I don't know if they, they quite count. What we've we talked about that, that before that Sully becomes so fixated, obsessed even with Boo. He becomes this parent character to the point where he doesn't care about anybody else's welfare or job or love life. He doesn't care that his best friend is exiled to the Himalayas. You know, none of that matters. None, none of it matters? Hey, it's a wonderland. And, uh, I, you know, so that I, that's a character trait. It's like, okay, so he, he, I don't know where that comes from, why they chose to do that. Yeah, because instantly Sully is no longer the me character when that happens. But that's 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 okay. It's neither here nor there. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, in the past, as I've you know been putting together things to try and uh, do as part of outlining, not from the outlining book that I've mentioned recently, but stuff that I've looked at before. I've had books just on character development and that kind of stuff that I've studied. And uh, one of the things you know, the questions that they'll ask you to ask yourself about your characters, you know, what's their prejudices, what's their political leanings, what's their, uh, you know, those, those kind of cherished beliefs, all those kind of things are things that you should ask yourself about the characters so that you can know how they would react when somebody says something or whatever. And, um, I guess that's basically the same thing that she's saying here. You don't want a character that has no opinions because then they have nothing to say when dialogue is supposed to happen. Unless it's, let's run over there. Uh, so I suppose that's what she's getting at. And then it seems like a, a pretty wise thing to do with, uh, with your characters. Uh, so I think we've reached the end of this episode. Yeah, could, can they even actually hear us? Over I don't know. Yeah, it's starting to get really loud with the rain, so I figured we'd cut this one off and we'll start it back up maybe after the rain has let up a little bit for the next episode. So we'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening. I'm Big Ankovich. And I'm Rush Outfield. Good night. That Gets My Goat is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it. So we, what we were doing before was the uh, the rules of Pixar storytelling. 22, I believe, altogether. We've kept that a closely guarded secret. Oh. So people will keep listening and thinking, oh, they're almost done. I should stick with it. I didn't realize that. <laughs> was it, is it a closely guarded secret? Sorry, I rephrase? No. I'm sure it's fine.